Today's gonna be a good day. The delivery truck is here. We have 20 panels and a bunch of solar equipment on that truck. So before they leave, we actually have to break down the box that all the solar panels are in and inspect each and every one just to make sure that everything's fine before we let them leave. Yeah, I got 20 panels. I got to go through all the other stuff you got to see. A bunch of small stuff, too. You know, a box of small stuff. Doing that. Got that. Lighting master. Got that. C75 foot cord. Got that. Feels so good. This is the stuff dreams are made of right it's cold, now. It's cold outside, but I think it's 29 outside, so it's pretty cold. It feels really good. Yeah. So we got all of the solar components unloaded from the truck. We went through, mm -hmm. checked everything. Everything did arrive and none of it was damaged, which is awesome. Yes. This is a part of the massive solar expansion that we were talking about on our vlog channel in the most recent video. Once all of this is installed and up and running, we're actually going to be bringing in three times the yes. amount of power that we're currently bringing in, which is a huge deal. Yeah, so since we're bringing that much more power in, this current setup with all the, with the inverter and the charge controller and the batteries, everything's in the way. So we gotta pretty much tear everything down and redo this entire wall, which is quite a bit of work. The battery's gonna go up in the air, Inverters moved over, more charge controls are getting installed, so it's a lot of work we gotta do. Yeah, there's there's a big to-do list with the amount yes. of power that we're coming in, and the way that it is right now does not work for us. Yep. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is switch back over to generator power, yep. which you already got us kind of up and running on that. Yep, so we actually just uh, plugged the extension cord into this little small generator. I cut the end of it off first and uh, tied it into two, to two breakers, and now, voila, we got power. So we're gonna go ahead and kill power here, mm -hmm. and, uh, disconnect everything and we're gonna be on generator power. Yes. For the next two days probably. And then we're gonna start by taking everything down and yeah. then putting it all back up. Yes. <laughs> uh, kill power to the panel. So this is actually the feed that comes from the uh, inverter that goes to the panel. I'm taking these off so I don't accidentally back feed anything because it's all gonna come down. This panel will be energized off the, off the uh, generator. So I don't wanna potentially back feed something and get electrocuted. So the generator is on. We actually took an extension cord, plugged it into the generator, we ran into the breakers, and it's temporary, guys. I know it's not kosher, it's temporary, so relax. But we're turned on, we're energized, so the powerhouse has power, and so does the uh, house. We actually, the generator we have is the same generator we used for the camper. It's only a 120 volt generator, it's not a 240 volt, volt generator, so everything that goes to the house. It's got 120 volts going there as of right now. So we have no 240 volt circuits out there inside the house. Everything that's 240 volt is inside of here. So everything is turned off, everything's safe. There's no issues that are gonna happen, but we are now safe to turn the batteries off, turn the disconnect off for the panels, and then start disconnecting everything and pull it all out. This is a disconnect for the panels that come into the uh, inverter. So I just disconnect power from here to the panels. So we have no voltage coming in if any sunlight hits the panels. 
So now the inverter is off. We actually, the 250 amp switch actually turns the inverter off from the battery. So that, that's good to go. The only thing that's left on is actually our battery monitor. The reason why is it's actually directly connected to the batteries itself. So now we're gonna go ahead and turn these batteries off next. So the first thing that we're gonna do is move the batteries from down here to up here. And the reason that we're doing that is one, we're gonna be growing the battery bank, we're gonna need more space, but also all of the new solar components are gonna reach all the way down this wall, so we're not gonna have space for the batteries down here anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and start cutting some channel and get a battery rack built for the uh, batteries. Magnets. Just space. Here's our plan for the battery rack. We got the 90 Kindor brackets up. Those are actually going through the two by four studs here. So it's not actually just going through the plywood, but it actually is dead center of the studs also. So we're actually gonna come off this way with a 16 inch piece, 45 down with another bracket, a little 45 bracket here. So the whole thing comes down and the weight's getting held on the wall. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and take our inch and a half channel and do three pieces, one in the back, one in the center, then one right here up, up front. And that's how the battery's gonna sit on top of that. And this thing should hold, this stuff is it's pretty damn tough. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Not only has Skillshare been a huge supporter of our channel over the past two years, but they've also helped me grow on a personal level by giving me access to literally thousands of online classes on topics such as film, cooking, gardening, productivity, and so much more. When I first joined Skillshare, I had one direction in mind, which was film, not surprisingly, but I quickly found that there was so much more for me to explore, such as the class Productivity Habits That Stick, using time theming with Mike Vardy. I'm big on being productive each day, using my time efficiently and meeting daily goals. And in Mike's class, he's helped me to structure my to-do list in a way that enables me to work smarter and have a better workflow. This is critical to my success each day, being that I'm juggling a lot from homeschooling, three kids, handling the livestock, filming and editing and helping Josh build. There's a lot going on and I need to be on my A-game. <laughs> so whether you're looking to simplify your productivity, learn new skills, or explore your creativity, Skillshare has a class for you. They are always launching new classes to help you stay focused, with most of the classes being under 60 minutes with short lessons, and it's only $10 a month with an annual subscription. And because Skillshare is sponsoring today's video, we have a link for you guys below where the first thousand people to click the link can get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. So thank you, Skillshare, for continuing to support our channel. Now. Let's get back to the build.
the next thing we're planning on doing is uh, getting some brackets on here and also getting channel going across. If we left it like this right now, it's not good enough. That thing's flimsy. It comes straight down, put those batteries on there. Each battery, battery is like 70 pounds, I think. Once we'll put these guys on here like that and drop another piece of channel down, crank another guy like that, it's gonna push all that weight down and put all the weight on the wall. And that's how it gets its strength, right there. So this is a test to show how much it can hold. Okay, I'm a smooth 169. Each battery is 70 pounds. So more than twice the weight, okay? So that being said, I have one, two, three, four, five, six of these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold on this thing. Oh yeah, look at that. Moral of the story is if it can hold Josh and his little Debbies, it can hold a bunch of batteries. Correct. <laughs> the point, the whole point, because I know someone's gonna say that's not gonna hold, and it holds, I knew it would. <laughs> At full, full, full faith in doing that. Okay. You got up there though. <laughs> you know what I mean? It bu buckle. It buckle. <laughs> hey, that's newer. What's so funny? Do you like to try my nuts? <laughs> well, it don't come with a master plan. A grand design, but it make it turn out the way you want it to. Well, son, that's left up to you. It's a race of undetermined length that'll test your mind and test your strength. Leave you feeling all alone, but always find a way to bring you home. We'll be careful not to waste it while planning how to make it, because it only comes once. And it don't last long Always remember It ain't something You can put on hold Don't let it pass you by Don't you be thinking you got it be It'll take the ground From under your feet Just when you think You're doing alright Find yourself on the floor, but like an open door it presents so we're opportunities that Next weren't there please. before. The question is, are you gonna take them and get up out that dirt? You guys are probably wondering why this guy right here is a little bit shorter than the other two, and how come we haven't done the other ones yet? The reason being is because there's no room in here, so we're gonna get these three done, take these batteries from down low, go ahead and put them on top. And once we have those going, we have enough room to take the inverter down and put them where the batteries are at, and then we can go ahead and put the brackets on. So, because right now the brackets won't come down because the inverter's in the way. Since that's the case, this is why this one's a little bit higher because the inverter's actually gonna sit right here. We'll be careful not to waste it while planning how to make it Cause it only comes once and it don't last long Always remember it ain't something you can hold Let it pass you by Let it Yet to be told. They say you should be looking for the one yet to be told. You got plenty of time. You can tell it when you roll. Just straight up. Wait. It's very, very heavy. Is this this is all connected? Yeah. The problem is, I put my suit somewhere, you put them somewhere That's else. That's not true. Yeah, you, no. I put them here, you put them over there. I take my, take my hoodie off, my, my morning hoodie, I take it off, I put it right here, you put it over there. His morning hoodie. <laughs> <laughs>
Don't hold on to this wire. I'm okay? obvi obviously. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Okay, so what's going to happen then? We're going to lift it up and we're going to work the wires out. And you're going to try not to throw your back out. <laughs> <laughs> and she snorts. <laughs> at all the wrong time. <laughs> oh, okay. One, two. Where, where's your backhand? What about this? Did you get this unconnected? One, two, three. I'm not gonna do this again. The wire's poking me. I'm not, I'm not gonna go do three again. We're going three this time. One, two, three. Hmm. Why was it? You try? Do you even try picking it up? <laughs> yes. I don't think you got everything unhooked. This. You didn't take that off. Is that, that in the that, wall? That holds the shield in some can, Aaron. <laughs> the screw is that long. <laughs> Let me okay, see. how about these? Does this slide out? <laughs> I must have missed that. Screw gun. That's what we're fighting the entire time. Jeez. That's why I'm here, Josh. Quality control. Got a breath? I mean, I know, but I'm just a little bit like nervous. My heart hasn't slowed down, that's all. Your heart hasn't slowed down since the first time you saw me. <laughs> just saying. Alright. Alright, boss. Now we got three charge controllers. This right here is the old existing one. He's actually not old, he's actually a year and a half old. He's still good. We bought two new ones. We actually had to get three totals because of the size of the array. So getting all this stuff installed and wired up will be the fun part, babe. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. I can't wait. I'm excited. <laughs> yep, so if you guys actually want us to go more in depth and more in detail about wiring all this stuff up and getting it all hooked up, just let us know in the comment section. I'll be happy to do it, no big deal. If you guys are new and wondering how we got to this point with solar, I will link our solar playlist below. It's going to give you guys the whole rundown on just the solar aspect of the build from building the solar stanchion, installing the panels, uh, the combiner box, trenching everything in up to the powerhouse, getting everything actually built and mounted in the powerhouse and the first time that we actually got power up and running, which was a huge day for us getting full-time power. And also the cost breakdown for our solar system is also in that playlist. So I'll link it below. One of the biggest motivators for us to move off grid was our desire to be more connected to life. I don't only mean being connected through spending more time together, but connected to life through being more responsible for providing ourselves with the everyday things that allow us to thrive. Things like the power we use, the water we drink, as much of our own food as possible, and the shelter for our family. 
For the past couple of years, we've been responsible for creating the power we use in order to build our own home and run our farm. By not relying on an outside source, we are naturally put at Mother Earth's will and have learned what we need to do to adapt to our changing seasons and unpredictable weather. Where we once went through life without needing to consider how if cloudy days or fluctuations in temperature would affect our life, we are now completely in tune with what the change in seasons means for both us, our land, and our livestock. We have become more connected to our own existence in a way that once wasn't possible for us until we moved off grid. Turn it off, dude. It's too hot in here now. Josh has the meat sweats. No, I don't. I got the heater on. I'm, I'm right next. Aaron makes me stand right next to it. And the, pro the huge problem we have is that she wants me to get in front of her so that I'm bigger than her because we all know she's 6'2, 210. So. All right, are you going to put a measuring tape up and prove that I'm 6'2? Si I'm uh, yeah. Okay, get, get the measuring tape, Josh. Jeez. What about? Can you fit through there, big guy? I'll fit through here. Okay. All right, guys. So she <laughs> no, is. You can't. You can't six bend two, it. Right there, yeah, right there. You can't bend it like that. Look, it's look, completely 74 bent. inches, guys. 74 inches. Six tail. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't bend it. You up, can't bend it. Up higher. Up higher. See? That's, you're on your tiptoes. <laughs> you're not. on your tiptoes. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is... Al Borland has his favorite shirt on today. <laughs> he also got to keep his uh, channel locks because you won the bet. All the electricians came out in strong support. And didn't thumbs uh, it up. <laughs> yes, well, they, they <laughs> thumbs it down for you. Okay. So, but everybody else, I mean, there was a how, strong how many, show. How many did we get anyway? I, I think there's like 45 some thumbs up. So, there, there were some people rooting for you to... Uh, keep the channel locks. No, to go without them. Oh, well, I'm going to build this entire thing with channel locks today. <laughs>